My name is Matt Moffat. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Chemistry at the University of Victoria. The title of my perspective article is Self-Assembly of Polymer Brush Functionalized Inorganic Nanoparticles from Hairy Balls to Smart Molecular Mimics. My research group has a general interest in the self-assembly of polymers and polymer nanoparticle materials, but what I thought I would do is uh, highlight some of the work that is described uh, in the perspective for this video. So uh, the perspective article defines three basic types of polymer functionalized inorganic nanoparticles uh, depending on their surface functionalization and self-assembly behavior. Uh, the first and simplest of these, uh, which we call type 1 nanoparticles, um, are inorganic nanoparticles functionalized isotropically by a single component polymer brush. Along with recent work from our group and others to direct the self-assembly of type 1 polymer brush coated uh, inorganic nanoparticles uh, using block copolymers or other directing components, this perspective also describes recent work to engineer the surfaces of inorganic nanoparticles um, using polymer brushes um, in order to produce inherently directional interactions between the nanoparticles uh, and generate very complex self-assembled structures, analogous to the self-assembly of phospholipids or polymeric amphiphiles. We synthesize amphiphilic nanoparticles in our group using a block copolymer template approach. We start with a tri-block copolymer with equal length polystyrene and polymethylmethacrylate blocks at the ends and a central shorter polyacrylic acid block. In organic solvents, the addition of cadmium acetate drives the aggregation of the central blocks to form micelles with a cadmium containing core and an isotropic mixed brush corona of polystyrene and polymethylmethacrylate chains. Reaction with hydrogen sulfide then allows a single cadmium sulfide quantum dot to form within each core, followed by covalent cross-linking of the polyacrylic acid chains in the core at the nanoparticle surface. Finally, the hydrophobic polymethylmethacrylate chains in the corona are hydrolyzed to hydrophilic polymethacrylic acid resulting in amphiphilic polymer brush coated quantum dots. This TEM image shows the final individual dots deposited from a dispersion in tetrahydrofuran or THF, revealing that no self-assembly occurs in this polar organic solvent. The high resolution image shows an individual quantum dot revealing the local crystalline ordering of ions within the micelle core. Although the mixed brushes on the nanoparticle surfaces are isotropic in tetrahydrofuran dispersions, an increase in solvent polarity by dropwise addition of water leads to local restructuring of the mixed brush via microphase separation between hydrophilic and hydrophobic chains. In this process, we propose that polystyrene chains wrap around the core to localize on one side of the nanoparticle, driven by the increasingly unfavorable solvent environment eventually forming a Janus brush. As water is continually added, a critical water content is reached above which the anisotropic assembly of the polystyrene nanoparticle faces becomes thermodynamically favorable. The resulting nanoparticle assembly is therefore very analogous to the self-assembly of amphiphilic block copolymers in solution, except that the resulting assemblies possess quantum dots localized at the various polymer-polymer interfaces, as shown in the schematic. Also similar to amphiphilic block copolymers in solution, the morphologies of the resulting assemblies will be determined by a balance of interfacial tension, the entropic penalty of polystyrene chain stretching in the core, and the repulsion between ionic blocks in the corona. In fact, the electrostatic repulsion between the partially charged polymethacrylic acid blocks in water provides an amazing chemical handle for directing the assembly of quantum dots into a wide range of very different colloidal structures, as demonstrated on the following slides. We control the repulsion between ionic chains via the ionic strength of the dispersion during self-assembly, which is simply regulated by the amount of sodium chloride salt added relative to the number of charged groups within the mixed brushes. 
If no salt is added, then the addition of water to dispersions of amphiphilic nanoparticles in THF, followed by dialysis to remove the organic solvent, leads to aqueous dispersions of fascinating worm-like assemblies of quantum dots. The resulting highly structured segmented cylinders eerily resemble annelids, such as common earthworms. The internal structure consists of a lamellar bilayer of hydrophobic and hydrophilic blocks, with the quantum dots localized in disks regularly spaced along the body of the worms. Within each disk, the quantum dots are found to be organized in hexagonally packed monolayers, indicating a high degree of organization on multiple link scales within these assembled structures. One striking feature of these worm-like assemblies is that only the polymethacrylic acid blocks around the periphery of the quantum dots are solubilized in water, with the vast majority of hydrophilic chains preferring to phase separate from solution and incorporate into the internal structure of the worms. We attribute this feature, which is an important driving force for the formation of these worms, to the high degree of electrostatic repulsion between the ionic chains in solution when the ionic strength is low. In fact, if we add a controlled amount of sodium chloride to the nanoparticle dispersions before self-assembly and then add water and dialyze, with all other conditions being identical to the formation of worms, we get a very different type of colloidal assembly. This one reminiscent of spherical block copolymer micelles, but with quantum dots localized at the polymer-polymer interface, as shown in this schematic. Notice that in these structures, all of the charged hydrophilic blocks are on the outside of the micelle core, in other words, solubilized in water, which becomes thermodynamically favorable due to screening of electrostatic repulsion between polymethacrylic acid chains when a controlled amount of salt is added. If we further screen repulsive interactions during self-assembly by adding a larger quantity of salt relative to the number of charged groups in the mixed brush, we get a completely different quantum dot assembly yet again. As shown in these TEM images at different magnifications, we obtain bilayer vesicles of amphiphilic quantum dots, with the quantum dots localized at two different interfaces on either side of the polystyrene vesicle wall. Again, all of the polymethacrylic acid chains are dissolved in water, either at a concave interface inside the water pool at the vesicle center, or at a convex interface on the outside of the vesicle. Um, another approach to um, controlled self-assembly is using the, uh, the top-down strategy um, of using external forces in order to direct the self-assembly of polymers and nanoparticles. Uh, one particular system in this area that we've been uh, very interested in lately um, is the use of microfluidics um, to direct the self-assembly of polymers and nanoparticles. Uh, using specific engi uh, specifically engineered microfluidic devices, um, you can obtain very high shear forces um, locally um, with relatively low energy inputs, such as the uh, um, flow control uh, applied by a syringe pump. And what we've done is we've used the controllable shear forces um, via controllable flow um, in order to direct the self-assembly of block copolymers into specific structures. And uh, this has a number of exciting implications uh, for um, uh, biomedical applications, including uh, drug delivery. Um, my name is Abby. I'm from China. I'm a master's student in Moffitt's group. I work with block copolymer self-assembly on microfluidic devices and today I'm going to show you how to work with the microfluidic chips. We use this photo mask to make the master chip and then we put the master chip under the PDMS and cure it so it looks like this and put it on a substrate so we get our chip for running. We have this two syringe pumps to adjust the liquid flow rate and we have three streams of liquid which is polymer, solvent and water. Then we connect it to the chip. And we also need to use this argon gas to help mixing. 
then we turn on the steering pump. And first, we need to adjust the gas pressure to uh, get stable flow. So we use this tubing to collect sample from the outlet. But before we get stable flow, we need to put it in the waste first and adjust the pressure. Okay, now after we get stable flow, we can start collecting our samples into this tube. And after we get our sample, we'll run TEM with them. So uh, students in my group are uh, working on a wide range of projects on um, polymer and polymer nanoparticle self-assembly uh, for a number of applications, uh, including uh, photonics, uh, computing, uh, drug delivery. Um, and essentially we're designing uh, various uh, tools um, in order to control structure at the nanoscale. And with this toolbox, hopefully uh, push forward to uh, a variety of applications.